to walk there. W what does it feel like? Is it, it, it's different from walking on sand? Well, yes it is because it's sand dusty. has a rougher texture. We were, this is like real fine graphite, the dust. Mm -hmm. We had lots of boulders, lots of craters, lots of outcropping of rocks, uh, bland in color, mostly shades of gray, uh, and yet we landed in a valley that was surrounded by mountains on three sides. Higher than the Grand Canyon of Arizona is deep, to give you some idea. So when we came down in, and I was picking out my landing site, we were below the tops of the mountains. So that's what, and, and when feet, you land, thousand meters, over. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes. And, and when you land, and all the vibration and the noise stops, the dust is gone, gets quiet. The definition of silence. You have to come to Gu grips. Guide us there. You actually landed. Oh, I with these two hands. I still have the hand controller yeah. with all the blood sitting to it. Yeah, I, I landed. I, I can Nothing tell you one was thing. automatic. Um, Nothing was automatic. I tried the simulator at the Air and Space Museum, and I, I, I couldn't land properly. That, that's pretty Mario, tricky. You could if you practice. Mario, do you believe I would go to the moon? Any astronaut who was in command of a mission to the moon would go all that way and let a computer land him? No way. We're too, we're too proud for that. We were not going to, that was not going to happen. No, I did land. Did you have the alternative of having a computer doing it? Did I? I'm sorry? The alternative of having the computer running the... There was a little switch that mm -hmm. said auto. Mm -hmm. And if you got close to the ground and you were satisfied, you could have flipped it. But it you might have worked, it, down it might not have worked. Mm -hmm. I expect it would have worked. Mm -hmm. But there's something in here mm -hmm. that says, I'm not, don't forget, I came close on Apollo 10. Yeah. We didn't land, but I came close. One of my objectives was to go, was to finish Apollo 10 and go the rest of the way and land and step on the surface of the moon. And there's, there's no way I or anybody else who had gone there would have not. Mm -hmm. we're, we're professional aviators. We're obviously a little arrogant. You know, I can do it better than it's ever been done before. That's the attitude well, you, you have. Do it. Well, I mean, yeah. That's, that's the attitude you Because you can. Because yeah. <laughs> you and, did you it. You know, and the other thing I needed to do, I wanted a responsibility of the successor mm -hmm. failure of mission. I wanted to be, if you will, in command of and the will. final mission. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that, I had to be in control of my own destiny. And the only way I could do that was mm -hmm. to fly the spacecraft. There is another, another fascinating angle. All that was uh, a very first generation technology as far as computer science is concerned, as far as, far as microcomputing is concerned. Um, was it incredibly risky and bold to attempt frontiers like the moon and uh, those technological circumstances? Some people say, yeah, it was a, well, a hell of a stunt, a very dangerous stunt. Apollo 13 showed it. Apollo 13 brought it home loud and clear. Wasn't it risky and bold? four and five and six hundred years ago when the Bosco da Gamas of their time left the shores of Portugal and sailed across an unknown ocean not knowing what there was in store, not knowing what they were going to find, not knowing whether they were going to come back. Wasn't that bold? Are we any different today? If I was, if I was Christopher Columbus sitting here and not me, you'd probably ask him the same questions you're asking oh, me. That's what we are all about. The technology of, of Columbus, of those early explorers, is obsolete, overshadowed by time. The technology of Apollo is obsolete. You have more computing power in the palm of your hand, in your cell phone, than I had to take me to the moon and back. Right. Think about that. And when we go back to the moon, and when we go on to Mars, and those young men and women come back with a getting there with new technology the same questions are going to be asked by someone sitting in your chair how did you feel what'd you think wasn't it bold was it risky mm -hmm. were you scared did you think you wouldn't come back it would be safer to attempt it now wouldn't it i to go to the moon yes since we've done it we didn't do it as a simulator we didn't do it we actually went we know how to do it we know the risk we know how to avoid the problems we ran into the first time i think in that respect as long as we don't make it too complicated keep it simple we know how to do it don't reinvent the wheel to get us to the moon the reason we're going to the moon is not to trip the reason we're going to the moon 
is to be there. Use the technology while we're on the moon. Don't make the trip, make it safe, make it uh, cost effective, and, and, and make it simple. Because, sounds crazy, the trip to the moon is a waste of time. Oh, we do experiments and, you know, other things. The, the only reason we go is to be there. Think of that.